Is traditional America gone for good? I believe traditional America can come back, but it will take a very special person to make that happen. Secularism is certainly eroding traditional power. No question about it. The key question going forward is the secular progressive movement good for Americans, no matter what their ethnicity or economic condition? And the answer is no. Secular progressives champion a do-your-own-thing philosophy. No judgments about personal behavior are allowed in that arena. And that's now wreaking havoc on American society. Minorities are more affected by poverty because the traditional family unit has broken down in those precincts. And rather than trying to reverse that, secular progressives want more entitlement spending. Nothing about changing libertine attitudes. They don't want limitations on so-called private behavior. No judgments. I believe the majority of Americans can be persuaded that the far left is a dangerous outfit bent on destroying traditional America and replacing it with a social free fire zone. So in case you haven't heard, Bill O'Reilly is taking a vacation. He made the announcement on his show earlier this week even threw up a little guessing game on the website for the fans, like a cut the shit Sonny wears Waldo. The timing of his departure is the stuff political cartoons are made of. A plane taking off into the sunshine in one panel while flames consume 1211 Avenue of the Americas in the other. I guess I am a little curious. In which paradise will this mega-rich primetime bloviator sequester himself while the fire threatens to burn his life's work to the ground? You see, O'Reilly has been having a rough year. Most recently, the New York Times published a damning article which claimed, among saucier details, that Billo, Mr. Judeo-Christian Values, has cost Fox News $13 million in settlement paid to five women who were each the recipient of unwanted sexual advances and or other forms of abuse. They say their careers were threatened directly by O'Reilly. And near as we can tell here at Swing State, the only response O'Reilly has given, except for a sad, non-specific statement about putting the controversy to rest for his family, is that once you work for a company, you owe that company loyalty. If you don't like the culture of the workplace, don't let the door hit you on the way out. This follows on the heels of an unfortunate legal turn last spring. Billow's daughter told the court that she had seen traditional values O'Reilly choking her mother, Maureen McPhilney, and that they didn't want to live with him anymore. He lost the custody battle. None of this is, of course, particularly shocking to non-Fox News viewers who have paid any attention to what the world outside the right-wing echo chamber has to say either about Bill O'Reilly or Fox News. Around the time of the Republican convention last summer, the explosive story of Roger Ailes, CEO, chairman, and principal architect of the Fox News channel, appeared in the media. Host Gretchen Carlson threw open the curtains and light poured in, exposing a serial sexual predator who ran his infotainment network like a harem. And the women of the network, seemingly all of them, kept their jobs not because of their work or professionalism, but based on whether or not they would sexually satisfy Jabba the Roger. Her work thus finished, Carlson quit and sued the network. They settled out of court for $20 million. Shortly after the New York Times story confirmed that Billow was also to blame for the dystopian corporate culture at Fox News, the exodus began. Advertisers bolted for the door at a rate that ought to be a second political cartoon, with little stick-legged logos for Lexus, Advil, and H&R Block scurrying like rats from a sinking ship captained by a smirking, splotchy-faced O'Reilly. But for about a week, Bill maintained his vulture's perch atop the pseudo-journalism outlet he more or less built with his friend Roger. His audience, at least so far, has not been dissuaded from tuning in, which would ordinarily be remarkable, but for Fox viewers, it is just the latest con they failed to spot from sheer lack of relevant information. Nobody, for instance, who knew about the Andrea Macra scandal in 2004, or who was familiar with Billow's tendency to alter history in his Killing Historical Person series to make himself seem more central to it, would be surprised to learn the truth about Bill. Look, there is a point in here, and it's not just a glory and yet another right-wing virtue monger collapsing under the weight of his own bluster and bullshit. Because this seems to be a pattern. Show me the man. Always a man, too. Claiming to be the lone voice of morality in a TV universe filled with secularists, and I will show you a fraud. And make no mistake, that is what Bill O'Reilly is. Whatever his qualities as a broadcaster or interviewer, O'Reilly started his career heaping coals upon the head of Bill Clinton, and now he joins the ranks of Newt Gingrich and Ken Starr, just another lying debauch looking at himself in the mirror, lying into the mirror, the same way he lies into the camera, lies to his wife, lies to his kids, and lies to the country. 
As someone who is aligned with the political left, I am approaching a crisis of empathy. What more can I say to someone who watches Fox News, who turns to a hypocrite like Bill O'Reilly, a filthy stain of a person, for a sermon on traditional values, or any values at all? What do I say to a person who is willing to vote for a president who admitted on tape to this very same sort of behavior? There really are only so many options. If you don't know the truth about Bill O'Reilly and Roger Ailes and Donald Trump, you're either ignorant or a fool. On the other hand, if you do know the truth, but simply fail to see the relevance of it, or worse, don't care at all that this man and men like him have done these things to women, there's something wrong. Really, truly wrong. And there is something wrong with the American right wing, and there has been my entire life. It's more than a few individuals failing to live up to a standard. It's an entire culture, from pill-popping Limbaugh to the Fox News Channel, assuming a perch on a moral mountaintop high above the swamp of secularism, outwardly preaching nonsense about traditional values while inwardly monsters run the joint. It's empty, all of it, and worse than empty, it is a peerless form of hypocrisy that has over time eroded American democracy and clouded the ability of otherwise decent people to think rationally. Because instead of turning to journalists and experts in relevant fields for the news of the day, they turn to what John Stewart called Bullshit Mountain, of which O'Reilly is the king, or at least he was. Speculation is rampant that the young Murdoch boys, whose super-rich Australian father owns the parent company of Fox, want Billo to stay on vacation permanently. It would be an ignominious end. He would simply disappear from the airwaves. No goodbyes, no farewells, no sober reflection on a lifetime spent spinning in the no-spin zone. Just gone. Poof! Like the women whose careers he derailed out of smallness and spite when they wouldn't join him in his hotel room. Maybe that's a fitting end to the O'Reilly factor. One that reminds us karma is in our culture characterized as feminine. And she's a real bitch.